Hi everyone, welcome to North Star Knife Reviews. Decided to uh, jump on the World Knife Train here. Uh, open tag from Thrifty Kniffy. And I've got 14 of them here. Uh, I may have one or two other countries represented in my collection somewhere, but uh, these were the ones that I could pull out quickly. Um, now sometimes I will certainly have other knives from the same country, uh, but I went with just one from each. So uh, sometimes I didn't maybe pick the most obvious one, but trying to just be a little bit different. Anyway, I'm gonna kind of move these away and then we will get started. All right, let's pull them out and do them one at a time. Uh, let's start out with this one, which I just uh, reviewed not that long ago. This would be from Finland. And this is a Wood Jewel Puko. Uh, now you can go back. None of these, uh, I'm not going to do the details on any of these. Just show them very briefly. Um, we've got the carbon steel blade, the curly birch and reindeer antler, leather sheath. Uh, really cool knife. I really like this. Um, so, Finland. There we go. Now let's move on to Ukraine. Certainly a place that's in the news now. Uh, this is a BPS knife, got a Scandi grind on it. I've also taken a look at this one not that long ago. Um, nice little knife. Uh, if you're looking for something, maybe an alternative to uh, a Mora style knife, something like that. Um, wooden handles, this has a 10, let me see, I think it was a 1080 blade. I may be wrong on that, uh, but I think that's what it was. And then we've got the, uh, again, the leather sheath. BPS out of Ukraine. Ah, uh, New Zealand. The Sford Peasant Knife. Um, people tend to either love these or hate these, uh, has been my experience. I, I really like it. Uh, I use it, and, you know, you can open it one-handed. Carbon steel, not great fit and finish, but uh, just as a general purpose beater knife, um, I found it to be quite useful. So there's New Zealand. Next country, oh, let's go with France. Uh, now, the, the obvious choice, I suppose, would have been Openel, and I've got probably a dozen Openels, but I decided to go with a knife from M. Cognier. This is the, uh, well, this is the El Baraka version of the Duke Duke. Uh, the original Duke Duke with the Polynesian uh, god, or, or actually Melanesian god, uh, was sold for the uh, the colonies in the Pacific. This model came out shortly thereafter, was used in North Africa. Uh, reviewed this a while back. One thing I didn't uh, mention at the time is that this was often turned into essentially a fixed blade by pounding down the handles so that uh, it wouldn't close on you, and that way you could use it as a fixed blade. So there we go, France. All right, what are we on? Number five here. Let's go. Let's go with Germany. Uh, certainly, I could have chosen, uh, you know, Bulker, Henry Roos, or something like that, but I decided to go with the Mercator from this one's made by Ottermesser. The Black Cat knife. Really a cool knife, I think. Nice classic. Um, been around since the 1800s and a very, very thin knife. All right, sort of along the lines of this German knife is this one from Ferraccio. This is an Italian knife. So maybe even, uh, actually I think it is, yeah, it's even a little bit thinner than this Mercado. This thing is very, very thin. And a little slip joint, okay, Siciliano. This is, again, as I say, from Ferraccio. You have the brass uh, with the stainless steel blade on it. Pretty cool knife if you're looking for something very, very thin. Not necessarily the most comfortable handle uh, because it is so thin, but certainly going to slide into your pocket and uh, not take up a whole lot of space. Let's stick with Europe and go to Spain. Uh, Thought about a couple of jokers, but decided to pull out this Kudaman, which, uh, again, I have taken a look at in the past. 
Uh, this is a lockback, the olive wood and steel handles, 440A on the blade. Um, you know, decent little knife. Don't tend to carry this one a lot, um, but I do kind of like it. Right next to Spain, we head to Portugal. And again, with Portugal, uh, I could have picked a couple of my mom knives, uh, but decided to go with this one from Martins. This has uh, the collar lock very much like the Opinel's, uh, but different handle shape, you see. Not as comfortable as an Opinel, um, but certainly something comparable if you were looking for a different style of blade. Um, actually has some, some similarities, in a way, to the Kudaman. Uh, a little more of that clip shape, not quite as pronounced. But, um, you know, decent little knife if you're just looking for something inexpensive. All right, sticking again with Europe. Uh, what are you going to do? The Swiss Army knife. Uh, you know, these are just uh, so popular. Victorinox is by far the largest knife maker in the world. This one happens to be a tinker. And uh, this, you know, as you can see, this is the Trash Panda design um, from Smoke Mountain Knife Works. Pick this up because I really like raccoons. I think they're kind of cool. Uh, you know, just your standard uh, tinker design, um, but with this special uh, handle on it. Moving then over to the Czech Republic. Little knife from Mikov. These knives, probably the greatest range and price of any single design uh, that I have. Um, you know, the little ones like this, the base models, these are maybe like seven or eight dollars, but you can get them all the way up to thousands of dollars. Uh, you can get them made in gold with ruby eyes on the fish, uh, if that's what you're looking for. Um, kind of a cool little classic knife that uh, a lot of people just carry as, as a little pocket. Knife. Let's see. A few more here. This from Sweden. And again, I uh, could have certainly selected one of my Moras, but decided to go with the little folding knife instead. Uh, I have taken a look at this one in the past, too. I think this is a really pretty little knife. And this is from Eka. See? Uh, ECA is an acronym, uh, my <laughs> pardon my Swedish, but Eskultuna uh, Knifabrik Aktabolog, right? Um, so uh, basically, Eskultuna Knife Manufacturers Incorporated. And they are, I believe, the only folding knife maker still uh, in Sweden. Um, but very cool design on the handle on this. And this is a little multi-tool. You have the little screwdriver cap lifter as well. And comes with a little leather, or I think it's leather. Yeah, looks like to be the actual leather. A little sheath to put it in your pocket, a little pocket slip. All right. One more from Europe. And that is this Rogers and Son uh, single bladed knife. I really like this knife. I have not taken a look at this uh, in an episode yet. Uh, keep meaning to do it, just have not gotten around to it. Um, but this is a very cool, uh, classy looking little knife, I think. See, it's Joseph Rogers, uh, Sheffield, England. Going to guess this one is from about the 60s, somewhere in the 1960s, maybe to early 1970s. You've got the wood handles uh, on here. Um, just a very, very nice little knife uh, for you. Okay. All right, now let's head over to Japan and the Higonakami. This is uh, another friction folder. This, I believe I have taken a look at uh, at one point. This is a very inexpensive Higonakami. You can certainly get the more expensive. This is a very basic model. Yeah, it's a friction folder, carbon steel blade, just a folded over metal handle. You know, you can open it one-handed. Um, very sharp, pretty thick blade on this, but uh, you know, a nice little knife that you can get, I think for about 10 or $12 for these basic models. 
Okay, and then finally, the United States. Now you could have gone with any number uh, on here, but I decided to go with this little knife from Ulster. Uh, I have taken a look at this in the past as well. This is from when Ulster was still a separate company uh, before it became part of Imperial Schrade. Uh, this has the mother of pearl, and I'm not 100% sure what the middle part is here. I think it is some type of horn or antler, um, but I am not 100% sure. But anyway, still a nice little knife. Uh, I've got the secondary blade on here as well. So, very cool. Anyway, thanks to Thrifty Kniffy for this tag. Uh, I think it was kind of an interesting one. You know, I know we didn't go into any detail on any of these, but most of these I've done before. Uh, and the one or two that I haven't probably will be coming up at some point. There you go. The world in knives. You all have a good day. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you found this at least somewhat interesting. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.